and keep giving up a round of applause that you can do it for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the one who saved us the one who redeemed us the one who called us his own the one who called us a chosen people and a royal priesthood his name is Jesus God we honor you God we bless your name God we give you glory God we give you honor this is our form of worship we don't need a song we don't need to be stirred we don't need to be told what to do but God we worship you in spirit and in truth for the very person that you are we say great are you Lord great are you Lord I'm so honored and so excited to be here with you all today. Thank you so much, friends and family. Boston, uh, Musicianary Promotion, Malaika, and everyone who's a part of the team. Just God richly bless you. Thank you for making this a reality. And listen, I'm here to do nothing else but to worship with y'all. And so if before we get into anything, just for about 30 seconds, if you could just say that song one last time. Great are you, Lord. Indeed, it's his breath that runs through our lungs. It's his blood that runs through our veins.
turn it back to you this night because it's yours anyways Jesus we return all honor we return all glory Jesus thank you for every single thing that you've done you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you're the one who rewrites our story you're the one who changes our name you're the one who has saved us Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you cared so much. Thank you that you see us individually. Thank you that you reached down, Jesus. You reached down. Thank you, Jesus, that you lifted us up. Thank you for the sacrifice that you did upon that cross, God. We're so grateful. All we can do is say, great are you, Lord. Praise God all over this place. Come on. What a wonderful time in the presence of God. I'm so glad, so excited to be here. I'm just gonna share a brief word, and so I guess as I share it, you can sit down or be on the ground or stand, whatever you feel most comfortable with, and we'll get back into, into worship in a bit. Um, just giving honor where it's due. Thank you so much, uh, Musicianary Promotions, Malika, this church, Pastor, thank you so much. Everyone who made this a reality. And I won't be speaking for long. Um, you know, Malika, Malika basically taught the word for the day. She, she brought the word. Um, but just speaking off of, you know, rebuilding the tabernacle of David, you know, looking through the Bible, I love David so much. I love David so much. My middle name is David, one of. And I did, I did an EP and I named it David's Heart. And I, I love David. Um, and so in the anchor scripture, Amos 9:11, it says, On that day I will raise the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the, as in the days of old. Malika so beautifully helped us understand that David took the Ark of the Covenant of God and he brought it back into the city of David. He recaptured, you know, the ark that meant so much to the people of Israel. And he brought it back And reading 1 Chronicles 15, 1. It says, David built houses for himself in the city of David. And he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. I love David so much. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. He was a man who said, listen, I have a place to stay. I want the Lord to have a place to stay. I want to create a tabernacle. I want to create a temple, a beautiful Ephesus where the presence of God can be and people can go in day in and day out and they can worship. And the Lord actually told him to put a pause on that plan. He said, your seed will do it. He said, you have too much blood on your hands. Your son will do it. But in the meantime, David took the Ark of the Covenant of God and he pitched a tent he pitched up a tent, which was, as you would know, maybe a makeshift church, a makeshift home. And what I find to be so particular and, or so amazing about this is that we can learn and understand that God still inhabited that place. And that place was the place that the prophet Amos spoke about. And we realized that there had been the tabernacle of Moses. There had been the tabernacle of Solomon afterwards. There had been so many temples, so many places, so many homes, so many churches, but there was something unique about the tabernacle of David. It teaches us that God is not so interested with what the place looks like in as much as he's interested with how we worship there. God's not so much interested in whether we're in a big church or in a small hall, or even in our homes doing, during a COVID quarantine, in as much as he's looking for 
our hearts as we worship. And if we're going to be the generation that rebuilds the tabernacle of David, we're seeing it even in this time, that it's going to call for us to, to worship even in unconventional ways, to be able to worship even over the screen, even, even in a small space, even in different cities. It's going to call for us to be able to worship that way. And the tabernacle of David was indeed a place of worship. The verse goes on to say, then David spoke, this is 15 and 16. Then David spoke to the leaders of the Levites and appointed their brethren to be singers, accompanied by instruments of music, stringed instruments, harps, cymbals, and by the raising of the voices with resounding joy. We have all those things today. We have stringed instruments. We have the guitar. We have the keys. We have the drums. We have our voices that we lift up in resounding joy. Amen. And... It's so beautiful because David understood the power that worship had. And that's why the tabernacle of David was so different. When Saul was distressed with spirits, they would call for David, the one who was skilled at the harp, the one who was prudent in speech, handsome looking, and he could play the song of the Lord for that spirit to leave Saul. He, he wrote the Psalms in in the, sh in, the, in the fields as he was watching over the sheep and, and protecting them from the, from the lions and, and the bears. It's in, it's in that place that he wrote those songs and he would play them and the spirit that distressed Saul would leave. We believe that as we lift worship through songs and through prayer and through our instruments and our voices that any distressing spirit has no place and has no hold over our lives and over our families. Amen. Amen. Worship is, is a place where we come and we approach the feet of Jesus. We approach the feet of the master, not looking at the issues that we have, not thinking about how much we have in the bank account or how much we're owing or what that one person had said to us or how this person offended us. It's the place that we come and we put every single thought aside and we put it under the subjection of the Holy Spirit and we worship. We don't worship just because of what we have. We don't worship at all because of what we have. We worship because of who he is. Worship is the place that we say, you are Yahweh. You are El Shaddai. You are Elohim. You are Adonai. Irrespective of what I have, I'm going to worship you. I'm not worshiping you just to get something. I'm not worshiping you so that I can receive a certain thing. I'm worshiping you because of who you are. We said in that song, it's your breath in my lungs so we pour out our praise and if I were to go up to someone and I were to say listen Brandon your voice is amazing you're you're a great man of God you're so you're so humble you're so anointed you're so handsome if I were to say those things to him he would be delighted right he would be he, I'm sure he'd be happy if I said those things to him and if I then came to him maybe next week and I said hey Brandon can you teach me the song I'm sure he would say yes in the place of worship, we approach our Father who loves us so much and we give him the honor that he's due. We give him the worship that he's due. We give him the glory. We give him the praise. And in that place, we connect with him, not for what we can get, but knowing that that relationship will lead to everything that we'll ever need. Yes, yes. And so the minstrels ministered before the ark regularly. It was their job. It was their duty. In the tabernacle of David, they showed up morning and night and they sang before the Lord and they played before the Lord and they ministered unto the Lord the tabernacle was a place of undignified praise Malika alluded to this and she spoke about how King David was coming after the the ark had blessed the house of Obed-Edom and they carried it the Levites carried it and he was dancing and he was losing his mind he was I, I'm trying to think about the, the dance moves he was doing if they were in 2021. He was, I don't know, maybe you could shout them out, Shakuin. <laughs> he, was, he was doing it. He was doing this thing. And his wife saw him and said, How, like, why are you doing this? You're a king. Like, you shouldn't, you're in such a high position. You shouldn't be doing this. And I believe that that's what holds a lot of us back, even in a place of worship. We start to think about how we appear and what someone may think and and someone may say we're doing too much and, you know, we may be out of character. But the thing that David understood was when we get to heaven, it's not about how you looked or how you, or how you look or how someone perceived you. But it's about focusing on 
the sovereignty and the goodness of God. And so he said, you know what, the Lord is good. And so he danced as a king, as the, the most powerful person in that land. He could have been like, someone dance for me. I'm about to chill on this, on this hammock. But someone danced for him. But he said, I'm not too big to get down and dance. I'm not too big to lift my hands. I'm not too big to, to lift my voice. And I think the more we understand this, we see that no matter how far God takes you, no matter how many promotions or elevations or degrees or, or, or statues or, or, or medals, no matter how many things he gives us, it's his anyways. It's his breath that's in our lungs. It's because of him that we can move and have our being. And so we return it all back to him in the place of worship. Each time we show up into spaces like this, we return it all back to him. We're not too ashamed to, to lift our hands. We're not too, we're not too afraid to, to raise our voice. David being king and priest, David being a king and priest, danced till his clothes basically fell off. And people would look at him and say, this guy is, he's crazy. But he understood the goodness of God. So fast forwarding in the New Testament in Acts 15, 16, the disciples and, and people are arguing. and They're saying, you know, these people who want to be believers must do X, Y, and Z. They must be circumcised. They, they must go through this and that and James says, after this, he remembers the prophetic word. He said, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. And he remembered that word that the prophet Amos had spoken about, the tabernacle of David, many years later. It's because he understood that, that, that when Jesus died, he left and he went to heaven and he sent his Holy Spirit. And his Holy Spirit dwelt and indwells in every single one of us as believers and as his children. And the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of us resides in us. A tabernacle is a place of dwelling. It's a home. It's a place of belonging. And the new place of belonging that the, that, that the Lord lives in. He, he no longer dwells in spaces or arcs or hovers. He, he lives on the inside of you and I. And that's why the word would say where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in their midst. And so tonight, rebuilding the tabernacle of David, I know maybe you may be like me or, or someone else. And you may have gone through a pandemic and, you know, we've been socially distanced, distancing and we've been away from people and we've been away from churches. And it's like, how do you worship again? I'm trying to remember. But today we realize rebuilding the tabernacle of David in the spirit of unity, whether black or white or African or wherever we're from, the spirit of God lives on the inside of you. And he lives on the inside of me. And when we join together and we worship together, he is here. Ooh, Jesus. He is here and there's nothing that's impossible. In the presence of the Lord, we know that there is fullness of joy. In the presence of the Lord, we know that the miracles, signs, and wonders can take place. In the presence of the Lord, the supernatural is released. And so I want to invite everyone on here to just be, just to be up on your feet. Come back in. We're about to worship. And we're restoring the tabernacle of David together. We've, we've spoken about so much. We've learned about so much. And I really do pray that it's, it's shifted our perspective Yes, sir. Awesome. That's, that's the, the tabernacle lights are on, you know. We're about to, we're about to worship. We're about to get into a, a time of prayer, into a time of praise, into a time of adoration. And I want to let us set pace. Before we sing any songs, I want you to just communicate to God and just begin to love on him. Begin to love on him in your earthly language, in your spiritual language, however you know best. Let's fill this room with worship. We are the rebuilt tabernacle of David with our hands, with our voices, with our hearts, with our minds.
the tabernacle of David right here and now with our worship. We're not holding back anything. This will be the generation that approaches the throne of God boldly. This will be the generation that approaches the throne of God without shame. The spirit of shame is broken. The spirit of fear is broken. The spirit of insecurity is broken in your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, 30 more seconds if we could raise it up. We lift up a sound to heaven.
Hamashiach Yeshua. You're the one that we're calling on this night. The word of the Lord says that. The Father gave him a name and that name is Jesus, Yeshua. And at the mention of that name, every knee bows and every tongue confesses that he alone is Lord. There are so many other names in this world. There are so many other so many other powers, so many other names, but the Bible says it must bow at the name of Jesus. And so tonight, as we lift up the name of Yeshua, everything falls down. There is only one kingdom that stands, and that's the kingdom of the Lord God Almighty. There is only one power that stands. You can try Buddha, you can try other gods, you can try Muhammad, but we will call on the name, the name. Yeshua! physician Yeshua there's nothing that he can't do there's nothing that he can't touch and we have spoken about it in his presence miracles can happen signs and wonders are released as we stretch our hands to heaven and as the band plays we receive the healing hand of the Almighty
say let heaven come we're praying that the agenda of God would reign and supersede the agenda of man we're praying and believing that boldness boldness would be with the believer that we would have the boldness to step into places the boldness to speak the word of the Lord the boldness to do what God is telling you to do the boldness to write the song that God has given you the boldness to release the song that God has given you. The boldness to write the book that God has given you. The boldness to be exactly who it is that God has given you. So in this moment as we sing, that heaven God, we break every spirit of doubt. We silence the lie of the enemy that says that your children are not enough. Jesus, your word says, that you have called us a royal priesthood a chosen generation. We break every lie of shame, of doubt, of fear, and we replace it, Jesus. Let heaven come. Thank you, Lord.
Receive the bread of the Almighty. Receive the bread of the Almighty. Receive the bread of the
Just breathe your name upon us. Breathe, Lord. Oh, your hand is your name. Jesus! 
a lamb. Worthy is a lamb. You are whole. We give you glory. 
there's nothing you can't do. You're a miracle working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise king, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, it's who you always been, it's who you will always be, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. said this used to be a bank, am I right? You said this used to be a bank. 
and she's like, we're, we're believing for provision and, and supernatural breakthrough and, and all this stuff. And can we just cement that with this song? Saying that, Jaira, you will provide. Thank you, Jesus, in every circumstance. Woo. So we'll sing this. Jaira, you are known. Jaira, you are known. I will be in every child. Mm. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I could do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy. Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind. You call me out to so stay by my side when the sun goes down. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. You say, child. Content 
every circumstance. Jehovah Jireh, you are enough. All the cross is place. Give Jehovah Jireh a clap and a shout of praise. So Ryan, don't go nowhere. I think we have a prophetic excitement. I didn't go over there for the reason. I had to like pray and, and, and begin to pray in tongues. But I believe the Holy Ghost says a lot of people came in here with a need. Is that true? A lot, a lot of you came in here with a need. You guys have a burden and a need on your hand. I see one, brother. Anybody got, else got to have a need? I see two. Don't be shy. Uh, where's, I was going to say Brandon. Brandon, can you put the lights on for me? Because you know where it is. Somebody said, let there be light. That's right. Jesus did that. But I think the Halama Tu Kapanta. I believe the prophetic assignment tonight. Because Brian raised a song. He said, Amen, it is finished. Brian, was that is that a, a, a pre-recorded song or was that a prophetic song you were releasing? Was that a prophetic song you were releasing? Have you ever sung it before? Has it ever been written? Hama Tu Kapanta. Have you ever been written before? Okay, so I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. I believe a lot of you came here with a need and you see the wall. The church has turned the wall into a prayer, right? Don't look at my, don't look at my, what's, thank you, honey. Don't look at the flesh, my, like I'm just human, but look at the God in me. And if you believe this prophetic instruction, Bible says, if you believe as a child, I believe God will answer your prayer. I want everybody to grab a marker and prophetically Ryan is about to sing and I'm about to lift up a, a prayer. Grab a marker and put that need on this wall. This is a sanctuary, this is a holy place and this wall has been turned into a prayer request. And now, while I, while I was praying, and he, Lord told me, Ryan is about to release a prophetic song. And he released it. But you know, I was praying with my prayer partner. We were praying every, Adams, God bless you. We were praying every Monday and Thursday. And one of our prayer topics was like, Lord, release. You know why? Because the Bible says in Zephaniah, the Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. I will sing over you. And I believe what happened, the Lord did. He's imatuya lapantu kapanta. He began to sing to Pastor Ryan because he understands that you guys have a need. All of you guys came here with a burden. I can sense it. And then he raised the last song, Jaira. Prophetically, I believe the Lord is saying something. Grab a marker. As he began to sing prophetically, I want you to write the need on the prayer wall. You don't have to put your name. Don't put your name. Be, be anonymous. Don't put your name. And a prophetic, I believe prophetically as he releases a song, that's amen it is finished or whatever the holy spirit is leading to you i believe your prayers will be answered i'm also pray amen all right right release the prophetic word y'all begin to write your prayer i'm gonna write mine as well amen 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 let it be done here on earth amen 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 you see every word Amen, amen, amen. It is finished. Amen, amen, amen. It is finished. Let it be done here on earth as in the heavens. Let it be done here on earth. 
singing for me while I pray. Keep singing for me. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, we come to you tonight, Father. You've given us a prophetic instruction. You saw the burdens of your heart. You saw the knees and the burdens of your people. And Father, tonight, as you've written our prayer requests on these walls, let heaven see them and let every need and heart cry. Let it be answered in the name of Jesus. Every burden, Lord, let it be lifted. Financial stress, release them in the name of Jesus. For it is you that give it power to get wealth. It is you that give it power to get wealth in the name of Jesus. Every heart cry, Father, of your students, of your young adults, of your mothers, of your sons, of your daughters, Father. We pray that you answer it, Lord. You said those and access shall receive father and father we ask of god uh, let these prayers be answered in the name of jesus you said call unto me call unto me call unto me and i will answer thee you said to call and father we have written we are called to our writings and tonight let it be answered let it be answered in the name of jesus in the name of jesus every need every scholarship my God, Anta, Uta, Hama, Uta, Anta, Imatu, Kupa, Taka, Panta, that one that needs a scholarship, Lord. Lord, let it come forth in the name of Jesus. We lift the gates, we lift the gates that have been shut to God to that scholarship in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you know the heart cry, you know the heart cry, you know the heart cry of the people, Father, you know the silent cry. Father, we lift our cup up tonight and we ask that you fill it, Father. We know your presence is here. We felt it. We thank you for every angel that's been in this building. May the angels carry our prayers in, inside the ink sink bowl and may it go up to the heavens tonight. Father, we thank you for a sound testimony because we gave you what you cannot give yourself, which is worship. We gave you the ultimate worship, Father. And Father, we thank you so much for what you did here tonight we thank you for the prophetic song you did tell me you was going to release one tonight because you said you will be in the midst of us mighty and you will sing over us with joy father we thank you for singing through your servant let us know amen it is finished Tatalastaya, it is done. That need, it is, it is answered. It is the provision is here. Ayan tuma kapan tukutu, ramatuma kapani sun talabahaya. We thank you that the need has been answered, and we thank you for many testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, wow. Let's give it up for King Jesus. Not for like Let's give it up for King Jesus. Lift 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 it up for King Jesus. Make a shout. Make a shout. 